Welcome back to the Effort Over Everything podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kleep, and on today's episode, Gabe, MDV, and I are back for our weekly episode where we dive into stuff that's on our mind. Now, this week, we talk about the CAP program. That's the CrossFit Affiliate Programming. We talk about .com program. We talk about running a profitable gym. And an area that we dove into that I thought was really interesting was the idea of food, sleep, or fitness, and where to start. I always enjoy talking to Gabe and MDV, but I thought this episode in particular flowed really well. We had a great conversation and I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed putting it out. Now, before we get into it, I want to remind you about our friends over at Merrick Health. If you haven't checked them out, I've been talking about them the last couple of months, actually. We all got our blood work done. Great insight was given. If you're thinking about getting your blood work done, check out the podcast show notes for a link on the exact same panel that I got. Use the code EOE, effort over everything for 10% off. Now, without any further ado, Let's dive into a great episode with Gabe and MDV. Let's go. So today is Thursday. We are rocking and rolling. Um, I actually have the Yeti team in, 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 in town, and I'm going to my first ever Yeti tour um, video tour. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of these before, but I just want to kind of send a shout out to anybody who's interested. What Yeti does is they go around the country and they put on these film tours and it's seven small films that are 15 minutes each, each highlighting someone doing something really cool. And, you know, like, you know, like a, a, a mountaineer, a, a chef, a, a something. So I'll have to let you guys know next week how it goes, because I'm really excited to watch these small films. Does the Yeti team just walk around like all bundled up in like polar ice jackets <laughs> with like uh fucking fur around their heads all the time and carrying just ridiculous amounts of coolers that that's what i think of when i think of the yeti team i think they're like they show up in like no matter what climate they're like on a dog sled rolling up to the wherever they're meeting you no so everybody obviously has their like you know their their tumbler or their 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 water bottle right from from yeti uh they were not overly uh you know because a lot of the people that flew in they came in from much colder places than here in California. So when they flew in, it's probably like, you know, super hot compared to where they were at. We had a few people, we had one woman in particular, she was very interesting. So I had, I had a lunch with her yesterday. She is a fly fishing guide in Montana. But what's interesting about her job is that she's only a fly fisher woman for like four or five months out of the year. And she goes every single day for five months out of the year um, as a private guide but she can only have up to two people in her boat. So I was asking her more about what she does because I found it to be really interesting. So when I think about fly fishing, I think about you're like, you're, you're in waders, you're in the water and you're, you're casting and pulling back. What she does is a, like a escalated version of that. And she seemed extremely knowledgeable. So what she does, she goes down rapids class four and she's in like a small like boat where she has the oars and she will then guide her person to say like, hey, we're coming up right around that rock. There's going to be an area where the water's going to be calm. I want you to shoot for that right there. And so basically, as they're going down the rapids, she's giving different targets these people are shooting at behind rocks. And then it's her job to slow the boat down, let them catch the fish, and then it's a catch and release situation. But I had never heard of, um, I had never heard of that type of fishing. So that's an example of some of the people over there. Yeah, fly fishing you usually think of like the most peaceful kind of like river bend scene and you know, birds chirping and just like some old guy just like throwing the line, the long line. A river runs through it, man. That's it. That you know what? That's that's so funny. That's that's exactly what I thought. But according to her, her style is is much more. Um, it, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out more and I'm gonna tell you guys more about it because I was really that's intrigued. Like a by badass it. style of fly fishing, bro. She showed me a video and she showed me a picture. I'm just thinking to myself, man, this woman is is awesome you know because imagine you go down rapids she's like all right shoot there and then she has to slow the boat down enough to like to create an opportunity to actually catch the fish right behind the rock so it was cool that's but yes the yeti team is out and we're getting ready for the film festival should be good all right so where are we headed what are we talking about to this morning i think we're talking about uh smooth transitions that's all we're about here <laughs> just like just butter transitions in the podcast. Smooth, smooth, like like those rapids. Like the rapids. <laughs> Slow the boat down. Slow transition boat down. over. Hey, um, we both got our uh, last port coffee mugs right now. We're, we're we're getting fired up on some coffee. Oh, oh, uh, Gabe's got his Yeti mug. All right, so what's on your mind? 
I think we should talk about um, the transition of the CrossFit CAP program, which is their affiliate programming business, <clears throat> to uh, a new type of vision forward for them, I guess is the best way to, to talk about it. So for anybody who's kind of not up on the, the latest and greatest in, in the programming world, which is super exciting, I should say. Um, Very when exciting. <laughs> <laughs> CrossFit obviously is a functional training organization and, uh, you know, a bunch of months back, they acquired uh, a company called ham plan and ham plan was a programming company that was out there selling their programming to uh, affiliates and functional training gyms and CrossFit brought that group on and said, okay, now what you guys are going to do is you're going to be cap, which is the CrossFit affiliate program model. You're going to work with us for us. And we are going to put out a product to uh, our gyms all over the world that they can subscribe to. And what they originally launched with was that there would be the CAP program. And then every day you'd have a CrossFit.com workout that has always historically been for free that anybody in the world can go and look up. But affiliate owners could subscribe to CAP and get uh, you know, coaching notes and the workouts and some additional content and some of that stuff. But what was originally happening was <clears throat> they were lining up the CrossFit.com workout with the CAP programming, which seems like it makes sense. Hey, if you're going to say that this is who we are and this is what we do and we have these gyms all around the world, we're going to showcase our one workout here on CrossFit.com. CAP should, uh, in you know my humble opinion, they should be representing that. And then, you know, obviously for CrossFit.com, there's three training days and one rest day. So the CAP program would replace the rest day with another workout, but they, they were running CrossFit.com workouts with coaches notes and all that kind of stuff. They recently made an announcement, long story short, that CAP is going to be moving away from .com programming. They're no longer going to be following what shows up on CrossFit.com, which is a free workout, which is the tried and true CrossFit methodology, three on, one off, all the different types of things that you would see um, from that methodology. And they're going to be doing something a little different. So that's how I'll frame the discussion there, because I think it's really interesting. You have an organization that sells programming now to CrossFit gyms all over the world, and they're making this big change for some reason. I, and I, I'm interested in your guys' opinions, why they might have made this change. I have my own thoughts and opinions, but that's kind of the background. Well, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I, we've, we've said this before, and I think it's just dot com programming. <clears throat> God, excuse me again. Um, dot com programming just doesn't work for the group class. I mean, it's something that we've experienced ourselves at, at our gyms. We've seen it. And it's funny because as you were as you were kind of framing the conversation, MDV, I, I went on CrossFit.com. Me too. Me too. And if, you, <laughs> if you look at the, the past three days this oh week, my you God. know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the perfect example. You know, you have Helen on Monday, which Helen's a good workout, run 400 meters, 21 great kettlebell workout. swings, 12 pull-ups, you know, three rounds of that, great workout. But then Tuesday, the workout is literally just five by three snatch. And then, you know, you look at today, or, or sorry, Wednesday, and it's one L-sit rope climb, three overhead squats, one L-sit rope climb, six overhead squats, so on and so forth. And, you know, I mean, it, it for anyone out there that's listening, that's a coach or a gym owner, if you think about running those workouts in front of a group of, you know, your average gym goer that just wants to feel a little bit better, um, you know, look a little bit better and just get a workout and have a good time, that's not really the programming that's going to do it, you know, for a variety of reasons. We can talk about why we don't do single modality days and how you would make an entire class around just going heavy on a triple for the snatch. And then you have something like L-sit rope climbs, which, you know, how many people are doing L-sit rope climbs? How many people want to rope climb in general? And then you, you have the overhead squat. I think it was perfect that going on CrossFit.com now kind of has the, the who's who of examples that we would use for why, you know, we've found out in, in our experience that a lot of these movements and a lot of these approaches to, hey, this is all we're going to do today, it's just going to leave a, a lot to be desired from a lot of people these days. Yeah. One, one of the things I want to uh, highlight is, and, and then I'll, we'll come back to the programming, is that when, when they announced it, Morning Chalk Up, which is a, you know, kind of like the, I, I'd say it's the number one CrossFit functional training newsletter, they put out this message. And I saw a lot of the comments on social media, and a lot of them thought that it was CrossFit trying to make more money um, 
And I just, I just wanted to share this, that I, I don't think that's the case. I think that um, they thought it was CrossFit saying, hey, we're giving you the free work of the day. Um, we are now going to have this new program that's not the work of the day that's free on .com. And I think people took that as, hey, if you want these newer workouts, you have to pay for them. But what I really think they realized, it was not a money grab for CrossFit, in my opinion. I think what they came to the conclusion of is that their .com programming does not transfer well into the everyday gym. That's that's what I think. Now, that's just my hypothesis. But I don't think it was doc, uh, CrossFit saying, hey, I want to go make more money. I think it was them recognizing they had a need and they needed to fulfill it. So I just wanted to share that piece, uh, my opinion. Yeah, um, there, there also could be a bit of a conflict there. Like if you're an affiliate owner paying <clears throat> X number of dollars per month and your athletes are coming to you and saying, Hey, like I could just look at this workout every day for free, right? Um, you know, on this website over here, is that is that could be a conflict for people. I, I don't think that we should completely discount it. I don't think ultimately it's the main issue because obviously what you're paying for when you go to a gym is really just not the workout that's written on the board. You're paying for the coaching expertise, you're paying for the facility, you're paying for the equipment, you're paying for the experience, you're paying to be guided through the workout, all that kind of good stuff. You know, one of the things that, aside from the fucking movements and the workout selection, yes, I think that we should talk about that. that yeah, that, there's one I got to bring up before, after you're done. That's yeah. an issue. That's a big issue. I think that that's something that like, I, and I, I, listen, I know the guys who are involved in cap programming and like, I, I don't think that, that, that the true reasoning was like put out there to the universe about why, but that's just my opinion. But let's just talk about the structure of the program. Let's talk about it from like a really macro level. Let's talk about three on one off and then only showing you a workout a day at a time and then not necessarily having any sort of planned um, holidays or, you know, what if a rest day shows up on a Monday or a Friday or a Saturday, like affiliate owners and gym owners out there. I'm sorry. You need to have more forward thinking than that. You need to know that. Hey, on certain days, my population is in here in droves. On other days, maybe it's, you know, uh, a little bit uh, lighter. And, you know, I, on Saturday or Sunday, you know, depending on what's going on, we either have huge uh, groups of people or we don't have a, a ton of people. But just to have three on one off and then to be smashing a workout in there that like kind of fits, but hey, this is actually supposed to be a rest day. So the next day actually is going to be like a little higher intensity because the CrossFit.com methodology is intensity over three days where the third day it's kind of waning a little bit then you take a rest day and then you come back the next day you're supposed to be back at high intensity that's really at odds with how they were were programming right yeah i think what we should acknowledge here is that for i think just to kind of back up a little bit nc fit which was previously norcal crossfit which was previously crossfit santa clara followed.com i followed.com religiously for two years like i mean by the book and i did it for two years our affiliate did it for one year and then what i started to realize was there was some discrepancies and some some challenges that i recognized in terms of equipment in terms of running a class and i think com was was not originally designed i don't think for like 20 people in a group class it's designed for just hey this is the program we believe is going to get you in the best you know, best GPP program, constantly very function moves at a high intensity. It's, it, it was not designed through the lens of a gym owner. Yeah. And I think that's and important. Greg was a group trainer. He was a small group trainer and a one-on-one -on -one trainer. I don't, I don't think he was running humongous classes. Well, I mean, his original space wasn't huge, but I think that that, that takes into consideration equipment needs and also just like workout desires. And I think that what we saw at our gyms over time and the reason why our programming has, has evolved with it is that we are in the trenches on a daily basis. And we've seen, we've heard from our members that a workout like five rounds for time of max calorie row in 60 seconds and Turkish get-ups. And what that workout is, you have to complete 40 reps for calories. Each round, for example, if you row 25 calories, you have to do 15 Turkish get-ups. So uh, doing calorie row and Turkish get-ups, we have seen as its entirety is is not as desirable for our members and and if you're just coming in and snatching we have found that at our gyms that's not necessarily what people want and we needed to blend what people want what people need and we ultimately are running a for-profit business 
And we needed to create workouts that were fun, exciting, allowed our coaches to really thrive. And um, that's why we've evolved over the years. And I think that what they're showing us from adjusting.com is that maybe they're seeing the same thing. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe they are. And especially with the rest days, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's also some merit to the fact that, you know, CrossFit.com is programmed with an endless, endless amount of variety, right? And that's, right. that's, that's the goal of the methodology there is to be boundless, to be prepared for the unknown and the unknowable. But, you know, what we have seen is that a, a lot of, a lot of people out there, they, they want to get fit. They want to come in. They want to lose some weight. They want to be better conditioned. They want to be stronger. They want to go outside the gym and live their best life. Maybe doing a five by three snatch is the only thing that that person does that, that day after sitting at their desk from nine to five is not the type of workout that that person would benefit the most from, you know, and I'm, I'm not knocking anybody who wants to do that. That's fine if you want to do that. But like for the average person out there who needs exposure to fitness, like you need to do a little bit more than that move, movement wise. You need to get your yeah. body movement. Maybe you need to be using lighter loads. Maybe you need to be doing a little bit more just body weight stuff mixed in there, a little bit more variety and have a little bit more fun and not necessarily just hit your 15 lifts and then be out the door. So yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, one of the things too, I think that should be considered there. And that's just how we've evolved, right? And if someone wants to follow .com or utilize, cap, go for it, man. And if you're finding that it's increasing your benefits for you and for your gym, hell yeah. What we found is that we have evolved that and just shifted in our own direction towards, you know, a little less complexity in our NCX workouts and adding in some complexity in NC Metcon, just doing it in a slightly different way. And, you know, obviously if people want to check that out, they should check out the NC Fit Collective, world's best session plans and programming. But I think for people that like what they're doing here, go for it. And maybe by doing this type of programming after a while, they'll realize what they like and what they don't like. So it's all good. Just like I did. I followed it religiously for two years. And we're, listen, we're biased. We have opinions. We have, yes. a, <laughs> we run gyms. We have a, a, a programming business that we put out there that we think is a really fantastic solution for people that want to run a for-profit business and, you know, give functional training experiences to their members. That's another thing that I think is lost in the, the kind of conversation here when you're thinking about CrossFit.com is that like these businesses out there are running businesses for profit. Like you have people who are coming in and spending hard earned money to come into a gym on, on hope. I, I mean, our opinion is seven days a week, right? Like you want to be open seven days a week. I know that there's a lot of gyms out there. They're only open Monday through Saturday. That's okay too, but that's not how we choose to run it. We choose to give you seven days of, of workouts. You have now this conflict, this necessary conflict there with three on one off. And then what days certain things are showing up and not being able to plan for holidays or understand what workouts are coming or benchmarks or all that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you're running a for-profit business, people are paying for yes, the workouts, yes, the results, but also the, the experience that they get. And I think you have to be more well-planned than what was going on. You know, and another interesting anecdote that, that I can add is, you know, in, in being, director of sales and marketing for NC Fit now, but previously being like solely focused on the collective. It's safe to say that I've talked to hundreds of gym owners specifically about programming. And an interesting thing that I've heard, I, I, I'd probably safe to say the majority of times is gym owners referring to like old school CrossFit as strength plus a Metcon. And I think that that's interesting because I think what's happening there, and this is my hypothesis, but the one thing that is absolute fact is a lot of people believe that the way you program traditionally based off how it's taught in CrossFit is you have a strength portion where you're doing a lift, and then you have a Metcon that takes that same movement pattern, say if it's a squat or it's shoulder overhead, and incorporates that somehow into the, the workout that you do after. Now, that isn't the case. If you look at dot com programming, you you never combine a right. strength portion with a metcon. Like you, you just don't do that. It's, that's it's very that's rarely completely wrong. It's completely right. wrong. It's not it's not the case. It's just flat out wrong. But I think <laughs> what's happening, my my hypothesis is that people have gotten so wrapped up into this is what people want and this is what works that they've shifted the paradigm in their minds that because I am such a believer in CrossFit methodology. 
but because I know that members want a strength portion and then doing a workout, it almost has become conflated into, well, that's what CrossFit is. And that's interesting to me because it isn't, like you said, it's, it's completely wrong. And I think it, it's another way that I've seen firsthand in talking to these gym owners that there is this disconnect between what, you know, CrossFit.com programming is in a vacuum versus what gym owners all over the world see works and what they want to put forth for their members. I listen, I agree with you, Gabe. I think that this is also one of the things that like, Hey, if you're talking about <clears throat> methodology, if you want to be straight about methodology and you want to say strength plus a Metcon is the CrossFit methodology, I, I'm, I, you're wrong. That's not the CrossFit methodology. You could net, you will never go back in the annals of all the CrossFit.com workouts that have ever been programmed and find consecutive days that look like that. Never. There's like no chance that you'll find that. But one of the things that's tough about this idea of CrossFit, which they have, they, they've made it so because there's this idea that it could be anything, right? And this is a, this is a gift and a curse. It, the gift is that you have a tremendous amount of leeway in what you can put down on paper and be like, hey, we're doing CrossFit. And you could make the arguments that, you know, functional movements, variance, uh, intensity in there to any degree, the simplest of workouts to the most complicated, longest workouts with the most varied amounts of loads. You'd be like, hey, listen, this is CrossFit. So if somebody says that <clears throat> this is my interpretation of what CrossFit is, they always have this ace in the hole argument that you can pull and be like, yeah, I can't really argue with that. That like, if that's what your interpretation of the methodology is and how you want to bring it to life. Okay. But from a brass tax, like let's get down to business. Let's actually call spade a spade strength plus a Metcon every day is a, I like, I like that way to train. Like when I, I think that that's a fantastic way to train. I think that getting a lift in, spending some time, time under tension, and then taking that movement pattern and doing a conditioning workout and then taking your rest days when you need them. That's a fantastic fucking way to train. I love that. That is not CrossFit.com methodology. It's, it's not the methodology. Now, you know, for us at NC Fit, like we have recognized that that's what a, a lot of people want to experience. They want to come on in. They want to lift maybe at like a moderate to moderate heavy or even like, you know, light some days, but maybe not go super, super heavy. Um, if they don't, if they don't have to, if it's not in there for them and then do a workout afterwards and feel really good about the work that they got done. So you're not just walking in and just getting like a couple of lifts in, or you're not just walking in and getting like a five minute workout in you're combining those two things and you're getting a really great impact. So, you know, that's again, just my yeah, two cents on it. I do think ultimately over time, you will start to see shifts towards the model you just spoke about MDV. And I think that we're, we, we've been doing it for a long time that way. And I think that um, I think that cap pivoting away from dot com and is a, is an example of that. I I do think that when you look at dot com programming, for many people, it's probably awesome. They love it, right? But I'm looking at this one: triple under is GHD sit ups and deadlifts, right? That'd be very very difficult to run in a gym, and you would have to pretty much adjust the whole thing. It's 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3 of triple unders, JC setups, and deadlifts. And for people who desire to learn those skills, awesome, right? But very few people have triple unders. Um, very few gyms have the GHDs to accommodate that class. And the deadlift is, is whatever, it's fine. But the, the point being is that I do think over time, people are going to find the programs that they want to shift and evolve to. For example, I started in this program for years. And then I evolved into where I wanted to kind of take our gym and that, that programming. And then it's now evolved into a variety of different programs, including our, you know, NCX, which is a strength and then a conditioning piece. But I think for anybody listening, who's kind of listening to this conversation, I, I do think that every owner needs to take evaluation and say, Hey, is the programming I'm putting out? Is it, is it effective? Okay. Is it fun? Are people coming back? How's my retention? And, and, and looking at the program and then obviously the program can be the greatest program on the planet, but if you're not coaching it well, then that's a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother can of worms, right? Because you have the greatest program in the world, but if your coaches are not engaged and not doing a great job, your business won't be thriving. You know, let me ask you guys a question. So there is obviously an endlessly wide spectrum of people out there. And a lot of people have 
different goals or different aspirations. At NC Fit, you know, we have our charter of what we want to provide for people. And, you know, we have our vision of what fitness should be. We want people to live freely and fully outside of the gym. We want them to come into the gym and perform functional movements in a way that adds to their life outside of the gym. We want them to get exposure to strength, exposure to conditioning. We want them to kind of wrap it all up together in a nice package and be able to take that and then go and do and be, not necessarily just doing fitness for sport fitness's sake. Like we don't really, uh, we're not really big champions of that. We want you to take your fitness and go explore life, right? But my question to you guys is, Let's talk about just the average person who's showing up with their gym bag before or after work when they're going to uh, you know, an NC Fit gym or you know, any other gym out there. It doesn't matter what kind of gym we're talking about, really. What does that person, number one, what do you think they want? And that's going to be a guess from our end. Like, What do you think the average person wants? And two, in our opinion and your guys' opinion, what do you think they need? So if we're talking just about the average person who's showing up with their gym duffel bag you know, at the 5 a.m. class, they got to be at work at 8.30. What does that person want and what does that person need? What, what, are, we, what are we thinking in that equation, guys? Well, I mean, I think that, A, that's, you know, a pretty complicated question. And obviously, there's going to be a, a super wide array of answers. But generally speaking, right, generally speaking, I think that just anyone, yeah, anyone that's coached or owned a gym can agree that most people want to feel better and look better. Like that's that that's what it boils down to. Like people want, like people love, hey, I have more energy now, like my clothes fits a little different. Like they want their peers to like recognize the fact that, like, hey, you're looking great. Like we know that that's what's kind of at the heart of what people want. Now, in a vacuum, what people need to get that, I think that that's where, you know, it 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 starts to become a fine balance because at the end of the day, what people need to get those things that they want is consistent exercise, consistent workouts. If there's someone that like hates all exercise, but loves Zumba, they should do Zumba. Like, is that ideal? Is it, is it going to give them the same impact of coming in and deadlifting and pressing and squatting three times a week and getting a workout? Absolutely not. Put on but that they, Spanish music, bro. That that what was it? The clean house dude, music. Clean cleaning kit and espanol. I've gotten so dude. many people hit me up about that playlist. But anyway, <laughs> I got that, baby. To, to, to finish my point, you know, like if that person is going to hate and it's going to be a chore for them to come in and do an NCX workout, but they love Zumba, like that, that is what they need to get what they, that's going to get them as close as possible as what they want because they can be consistent. But I think that in a vacuum, if you're not taking into account, you know, what people enjoy, I think that what people need is regular exposure to resistance training, to what, you know, if you listen to the Peter Atias of the world is zone two kind of longer cardio and then intensity every now and then, which is a variety of different stimulus. But again, at the end of the day, it just comes down to what's going to make you show up consistently. And I think that what we do at NC Fit is try and take that, that like what the science in a vacuum shows will help people look better and feel better, resistance training, longer efforts, and short intense efforts, and try and package that up in a way where in an hour, with the equipment you can have in a gym, we can deliver the closest thing to that ideal in a vacuum while still making it exciting and fun for most people. Dude, I feel like you should drop the mic right now. That was a great job. And for anybody who's not watching this uh, and is listening, uh, MDV has been wearing sunglasses on the top of his head uh, the whole time. I'm not quite. Oh, they are not sunglasses. Oh, they're reading glasses. Oh, sorry. I thought they were sunglasses. You were trying to look cool um, for, for the camera. <laughs> that would be, I mean, that's something that one of us should pick up a shit or week. something where we like, somebody's always like the guy from Barstool, always in his sunglasses or whatever, like. You got to develop those personalities, baby. But I listen. I agree. Gabe, I think Gabe hit the nail on the head in terms of like what most people. It's a listen, it's a fucking impossible question because everybody has different variations of what they are showing up to the gym for. But at some level, everybody wants to improve their health more than likely. They want to feel better more than likely, and they want to look better more than likely. And I think that that's really important 
to recognize is like, this is like a core common goal for a lot of people. And yes, there's going to be people out there who want to excel at the sport of fitness or want to, you know, go run their best marathon or want to be a bench press champion or want to win a jujitsu championship or something along those lines. And yeah, they might need some specialized, you know, training or direction in that regard. But yeah, I mean, I, I think he summed up the goal for, for most people pretty damn well, Gabe. Yeah, no, I, I think you did a great job on that. And I think that it's a good testament to what we're trying to do. And, you know, I, I think it, gyms in general need to take that in consideration about what is being proven. Like things have evolved over the years, you know, and, and if you're looking for this overall blanket approach, I do think, you know, lifting some weights and getting your heart rate up, that's a great way to look at it. And if you have desires outside of that and you want to go do Zumba and that's going to keep you consistent, rock it. If you want to do jujitsu and that keeps you consistent, go for it. You know, I, I think that those are incredible, incredible things. But I think if you're looking for just, you know, look better, feel better. I think what we're providing is, is a great solution for you. What do you guys think in the hierarchy of, I kind of want to move past like the, the CrossFit discussion. I think we kind of, we, we already talked about that, but like in terms of the hierarchy of importance, where we're talking about consistent exercise, consistent nutrition, and maybe like we'll have a third category of consistent sleep and stress reduction. What are your opinions on how do you rank those three things in terms of health? Obviously, all three are important, but, you know, let's somebody who's out there who's maybe struggling right now with some issues of, uh, you know, lack of exercise or poor diet or they're not sleeping well, their stress is really high. There's a lot of things that you could it can be it can be stressful in itself to start thinking, hey, where the fuck, where do I start? How do I even take a first step forward? Like maybe Gabe, what, yeah. do, you, what do you think is like a good first step in thinking about those kind of three categories? I, to me, it would, it, like between nutrition and exercise, I think the tough piece is, I think nutrition is more important. Like I think you can be a lot healthier if you have optimal or close to optimal nutrition and, you know, maybe you're not prioritizing exercise in a meaningful way. Whereas if the opposite were true and you were like really good about your training, but you were eating like an asshole for lack of a better term, that person is going to be significantly less healthy than the first. But what I think is, is what I'm having trouble with in ranking them is I think that exercise though, I think is, is a lot more straightforward for most people, whereas sure. nutrition can get really complicated and really tough because there's, there's, we're just exposed to so many bad options and it's so easy to do the wrong thing. Whereas with exercise, you know, like if you're, if you find a, a, an NT fit gym or any gym, that's going to keep you accountable and you're going three to five times a week, like that's it. You pretty much have that covered and it could be fun. It could be somewhere where you're also meeting people and you're getting the post-workout endorphins. Like it's a positive experience if you find the right fit. Whereas someone that's struggling with diet, like turning that battleship around is, is, is tough. And it could be very much like something that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of grit to make the necessary changes. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough to balance between the two. I think nutrition is going to give you more bang for your buck, but I think exercise is kind of the low, lower hanging fruit for most people. I, I might even put sleep ahead of it. So I, I, I might say if you were deciding where to start, sleep, nutrition, or fitness. I think the one that's within your control the most, that's probably the easiest. And I, look, you can go back and forth on these, but I think the hurdle to go exercise, if you haven't been exercising is pretty big, right? You have to go find a gym or maybe do something on your own. That's a decent hurdle. Food, that's a whole nother conversation, but sleep, everybody does it. Everybody's been doing it their entire life. But if your sleep habits are off, you're only sleeping three hours a night. Well, I think identifying ways to improve that and that's either a, you know, you remove the technology at X time, or perhaps you're, you're doing certain things to downregulate your body to get you better prepared, or you're not eating so late. So you're able to sleep better at night. I think prioritizing the sleep is probably the lowest hanging fruit. Cause it's pretty like cut and dry. Hey, I'm going to go to bed at 10. I'm going to wake up at six, um, as an example. And your goal is to get that. If you're not getting at then identifying ways to, again, bring your body into a state of relaxation, maybe not eating so close to dinner time, trying to find ways to sleep better throughout the night. Um, maybe even trying like mouth taping, which I have still not done, but finding a way to nasal breathe instead of mouth breathe and see if that helps you. I think that's a, that's a low hanging fruit because if you're not sleeping well, you're pretty wrecked. Then I would put fitness 
because I think that fitness is the next attainable and it gives you so many other benefits like the, you know, the endorphins and the, and the, it makes you feel so good at the moment. And then I would put nutrition. This is another, I mean, it's another kind of impossible question. I think, you know, <laughs> they're all undeniably important. Um, I, I, I think in terms of like prioritization of importance, gosh, it really depends on the level of, uh, disorder that you're dealing with. Um, you know, if you have incredibly, incredibly disordered stress and sleep, like if you're just completely on the other side of healthy, like everything is going wrong, obviously you have to, you know, take, uh, steps to improve that even small steps will make humongous leaps. But like in terms, if we're just talking, if we're talking about somebody who's kind of like figuring out like, Hey, all three of these things right now are not going great for me. I could improve them all. I do think probably the most bang for your buck that you'll get is taking your nutrition seriously, more seriously and making some adjustments there and thinking about how can I improve that overall? Because the impact I think on your, your, your health, arguably for me would be the most through nutrition. Um, and I think sleep and stress reduction can come, those improvements in sleep and stress can come through improving nutrition. Obviously also through, you know, exercise, you'll get improved sleep and, uh, sh and stress management. But it's, I think that, you know, I, even as I'm talking through this, it's really, really difficult. It's challenging, man, because there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of information out there in all three of those worlds, all three of those worlds. There's an endless amount of things that you could try to like dive down rabbit holes and get to endless amounts of complexity about, <clears throat> but, you know, I think, you know, for the, for the exercise thing, that same advice that I would give somebody there, like, just start, just start moving, just start doing something, just, just change one little thing, go for a walk, you know, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes is better than no minutes, right? I think that that same concept of simplicity of just starting applies to those other two things as well. Like, if your nutrition is completely out of control, like just, just pick the smallest, smallest thing that you could think of that might improve where you're at right now, even if it's just a reduction overall of the amount of dessert that you're having, or like, you're going to say, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to, you know, replace, uh, these things over here that are not as optimal for me with it. You know, I can try some fruit and some yogurt or whatever, what, whatever small thing that you can think that you can stick to for a little bit, that would be my advice is just try that one thing and try to stick to it. Cause consistency in those three categories is what wins. Like, when you figure it out, when you start to build these habits, habit stack, that that consistency ultimately is is where you're going to get, quote unquote, better. And, you know, I heard this on the Rogan podcast the other day where it was like you get healthy the same the same way you, you got got sick, like the same amount of time. It's going to take time and it's going to take reps to get better. So, like, you can't expect that just with one meal or one walk or, you know, one good night's sleep. You're going to feel fucking good after that, but you might not necessarily see the immediate result on the scale or in the mirror. You know, I, I think that over time that that positive momentum builds like a wave. I love that. I uh, the other thing. I, so from recommendations, the things that I'm thinking about, right, I think uh, not eating too or too late before I go to bed has really dude. I'll tell you when I go out to dinner like last night, uh, my son had a baseball game. And so we went out to dinner afterwards with the, some of the team and I ate, you know, a little bit too much and I ate too close to bed and man, I just, I just had terrible sleep. And whenever I do that, I know it's going to happen. I just got to have more self-control because I'm at this restaurant, you know? And, uh, anyway, so for those of you who eat right before you go to bed, try and not eat right before bed. I think you'll, you'll receive better sleep. That's like a little hack. Um, and then obviously if you haven't tried the cold, um, the cold plunge has really been impacting my life in a positive way, but go ahead, Gabe. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you know, bringing it back to the EOE 40 challenge that we literally kicked the year off with. And, you know, we, we were very vocal about this from the beginning and how it was a 40 day challenge. And yes, you know, that we were supposed to be, the idea was to be super strict with the rules that you chose to follow for 40 days, but it was really meant to be a jumping off point for, you know, habits that would stick throughout the year. And since that challenge, I no longer bring my phone into the bedroom. Um, it stays charged at night. That was kind of my, my bedtime rule. 
And so now I, I, I just do some light reading at night. And the difference that has done for A, me falling asleep a lot quicker and B, the quality of sleep and, and not waking up throughout the night and just feeling rested has been huge. Because I used to be scrolling until like my eyes were like closing. Like, you know, it's like, what, it, what else do you do? Get in bed and you like mess around on your phone until you fall asleep. And the difference that that has made has been huge. And I don't think I would have tried to see how it had felt had it not been the rule for the challenge. So two things. One, if you're staring at devices late into the night, I think that that's definitely some low hanging fruit to help increase your quality of sleep. But two, you know, it could be incredibly powerful to commit to something for even a short period of time, because sometimes that'll show you how powerful that change is. And that might be the motivation you need to just turn it into like, I, I, I don't expect to ever bring my phone into the bedroom again. Like, why would I? I'm perfectly fine. And now it's been a habit that I've done for, for five months. Um, and it's been huge. I love that. That's awesome. That's, I mean, that's the value of those <clears throat> short term challenges. You know, a lot of people shit on them and be like, oh, well, you know, you're setting people up for failure because it ends on a certain date. No, 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 no. The whole point is to dial in, maybe be a little bit more stringent during that period, but then take a couple of the things or one of the things and implement that long term for yourself as something that now is this consistent habit. You know, <clears throat> I was just thinking about this guy, like nutrition is so fucking hard, man. It's so hard because there's a million temptations all the time. Like, and there's no barrier. If you're a, if you're an, if you're an able person and you're of age and you know, you have some money or, you know, even just a little spending money, whatever it is, like you can literally go anywhere and get probably mostly anything that you would want and put it into your mouth and nobody's going to stop you. Like it's, it's, you could go into any soup, any store, you know, any, any place that you go and there's a checkout counter, there's an endless amount of now candy and drinks and sugary stuff and all that kind of uh, stuff. That's always right in your face. It's so challenging. And I think that, you know, when you're thinking about <clears throat> nutrition, you don't have to be perfect. I think that there's obviously a lot of downsides to trying to be perfect and beating yourself up when you're not perfect and sliding down and kind of getting into this weird cycle where you beat yourself up, slide down, beat yourself up, slide down. But you really do have to, of all those million temptations that you're going to have, you have to try to develop the discipline where most of the time, like, a lot of the time, the vast majority of the time that you're moving in the direction that's towards your goals and not compromising and not saying, well, hey, just this once, just this once, just this once. It's always just this once. It's going to end up being, you know, the rule as opposed to the exception to the rule. So, you know, my encouragement out there, anybody struggling with that, that nutrition stuff is like you have to learn to tap into some sort of deeper level of, of discipline. You have to realize that, hey, if there's a goal that's on my horizon, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of the consistent decisions towards the direction that you want to go. And yeah, you can veer off a little bit and you can kind of be imperfect. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but you, you really do have to take control there and be driving the ship one way. Yeah. I think one of the things I'm incorporating, so for 40 days, right, I ate just meat and some fruit and I was really, really strict. I actually sent before and after pictures to Gabe. Uh, they're the first ones I've ever taken in my entire life. And um, I don't know what you did with those, Gabe. Hopefully you, uh, hopefully they're, <laughs> they're on only fans. Yeah. <laughs> but I was so strict and it was great. But since then, you know, I've, you know, I I've had these temptations as MDV calls it. I think I'm going to commit to, uh, I have to get off the, um, I, I think I just need to get back to just wine. I think one of the, the struggles I've had is like last night I had an old fashioned, all of a sudden that old fashioned, it just does so much, right? Because not only are you getting the sugar from the old fashioned, then you maybe have another old fashioned, then you don't give a shit about what you're eating. It's just this whole slippery slope. So I think, I think you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, like, from from right this moment forward, I'm gonna I'm gonna go cold turkey on the on the hard stuff and just go with uh, just wine. So I'm gonna try that. I'll report back to you guys like in a month. <laughs> no, boo booze is a gateway, man, for 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 bad decisions for a lot of people. Not bad decisions, let's not call them bad decisions, well, maybe bad decisions, but like. It makes it, it really does uh, make it harder to, to be disciplined. You know, you get a couple of drinks in you, start feeling a little loose. You know, that, that speed dial to Domino's looks real good after you have oh, four, four or five beers and you're staying up to watch another episode of 
the staircase or whatever latest true crime is out there. <laughs> There's a lot of comfort in that, man. Like this is like my fucking life. These are the decisions that I, I struggle with sometimes. And you know, I, I, first of all, I hate feeling out of control. So that's one of the reasons where I don't, I don't drink a lot and I haven't really drank a lot for many, many years because I don't like the feeling of, of being like outside of my core decision-making abilities. I, not, not necessarily for the food stuff. I think the food stuff is like the first bump in the road where I'm like, Hey, this is still fun. But the yeah. next bump in the road where it's like, Oh shit, I'm not really, I don't have all my faculties about me. I, I don't, I feel very, very uncomfortable at that point. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm getting rid of the, I'm getting rid of the old fashions. Ah, it's going to break my heart, but some, it's got to happen. So I'm going back to my Pinot's, um, Pinot's and coffee. That's what basically I'm going to live off of. Oh, and a lot of water. New, a lot of water. New, new podcast, new Pinot's podcast. and coffee. Yeah. Pinot's, <laughs> Pinot's and coffee. Um, oh, oh man. that's, that's what we got to do. Um, but yeah, we got to look, I'm excited about this film festival. I'll get back to you guys on how that went and hopefully we could share some of those videos. Um, I think the conversation about dot com programming, she just, it's just something that's opening people's eyes to, Hey, find what works for you. But for us, we've kind of gone in this direction and that's the reason why. And, um, I thought the question that we asked about food, sleep, or fitness is pretty, pretty cool. I, I don't know if there's an easy answer to that, but just finding what works for you and staying consistent, I think is the key. So anyway, what do you guys got planned for the weekend? Hey, how are the Mets doing by the way, Gabe? I ask you every week and it Dude, still, it. The, still the best team in baseball. Knock on wood. That's really question. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Dude. This is it. I told MDV at the beginning of this year. I told him this is the year. 2016 vibes right now. Dude, 2022 is going to be the year that this is the my year. prayers are answered. Well, it's the year every year, but this is really the year. No, but this is this is the year, though. Dude, I know I said this for the past 10 years, every single year, but no, 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 no. You know, uh, this is going to be random, but my son was up to bat the other day. And, dude, I watched him like – he was at practice and he just kept swinging, dude. He was trying to nail this ball. Like, like, I mean, you guys have seen it. Right. And so afterwards I talked to him, I was like, look, man, if you want to be a good team player, like no one cares if you hit a home run, they just want you to connect with the ball. They want you to get on base. They want you to, they, they want you to not strike out. And right now you look like a, like a hard piece of, of pasta. And what I need you to look like is a little bit more fluid. Like one that's been in hot water, like nice and fluid. Cause he's so tense. And I thought that was an interesting analogy. I don't know how it relates to other areas, but he looked like a heartbeat. They were just so, you know, and he didn't have that flow, right? So he needed to be like a piece of noodle. So, Jason my Bruce Lee Khalifa over here. You gotta be I don't know if that's that. even right. Someone's going to be listening to like, Jay, you, Yeah. Jason's going to be like, someone's going to be like, Jason, you don't know shit about baseball. You don't want to be like a wet noodle. Um, but he was just so tense. So I was trying to give him an analogy. So that's my that's analogy of the advice. day. That's good advice for that age is, you know, you want to be making contact with the ball and figure out the mechanics of your swing and being super tense and trying to overpower the ball. I see seven years old. Like he's a big kid. He's probably going to end up being a little bit more of a power hitter than like a bunt, uh, you know, <laughs> down the first baseline, you know, kind of uh, base hit guy. But yeah, I think at this age, man, figuring out the mechanics of his swing and having fun with it and being fluid is really important. Yeah. I might do a cough with Kalipa on, on uh, being a wet piece of pasta. Maybe that'll be the, I don't know, probably not. That sounded like an okay idea. Well, I hope the Mets continue to win. Uh, I hope uh, MDV, I hope, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys hopefully in like a month. We, we got to get back together again. Yes, we do. Uh, All right. Any closing yes. remarks before we uh, take off and go crush the rest of the day? No, going to get after it today, man. Feeling really good. Do some stretching. Today's a little bit more of like a recovery day. I'm going to do some yoga, going to sauna, and then uh, back on the jujitsu mats tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, it's it, it's funny because obviously we 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 don't have kids yet. But I saw a meme the other day where um, it was like when you have to do all the things that your wife does for like a day, and you're like, you don't have no idea how they do it. So for us, it's it's the farm. But Ariel went on a trip. She left this morning, and I've done plenty of traveling. And she stays back solo and has to do everything. And I don't hear a peep from her. She's like, oh yeah, everything went fine. I have to do farm chores by myself this morning. And I swear it took me like three times as long. Like I, I'm still not sure that I did everything. I have to like text her and like triple check. It's just, it's, it's funny. Cause I feel like I, it, it holds true. She gets it all done when I'm gone, but she's not here. And I'm like drowning in a, a bucket of water over here. So dude, I, I, I going to be an interesting three days. I, I would be worthless uh, without <laughs> Ashley. Like 
when Asher was in London, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I mean, <laughs> and I, and so I don't know how they do it, but they keep everything together. So shout out to all the ladies out there holding it all together in the house because, or whatever you're doing, because uh, without you guys, we'd be screwed. Um, well, everybody, make sure if you're a gym owner, make sure to check out the NC Fit Collective, the world's best session plans and programming for your gym that we use in our gyms. And if you're out there crushing it in your garage, want to go crush it at a traditional gym, go crush it anywhere. We have the NC Fit app, uh, same workouts that we do on a daily basis. And if you're liking these episodes, leave us a rating, leave us a review, keep getting after it and have a great week.